It's always important to stay up to date with discoveries and changing science. It's the only way that we can stay informed and keep our brains well fed. Fantastically, the more discoveries that are made, the more that we realize how little we truly understand about the world around us and how much more there is to uncover in the search for the secret inner workings of our world. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we're going to show you three incredible discoveries that will shock, inspire, and educate. Physicists confirm that time moves forward in the quantum world. When it comes to the quantum world, not everything is business as usual. In the realm that is smaller than atoms, the laws of nature simply do not play by the rules. But there is one rule specifically, the passage of time, that does. Scientists in 2015 ran tests that confirmed that the laws of thermodynamics still apply even at the quantum level. The second law of thermodynamics states that over the passage of time, everything increases in entropy and eventually becomes more and more disordered. That process cannot be undone or paused, which causes the passing of time. Therefore, time only goes in one direction, forward. Yet scientists have suspected that in the quantum world, things might be a little different. This is because at that level, where particles are smaller than atoms, things start to act strangely. Scientists considered that the quantum realm might have a non-linear passage of time because of how other laws of physics, such as the Schrodinger equation, act there. Lisa Zeiger wrote that in the quantum world, in theory, forward and backward microscopic processes are indistinguishable. But a team of physicists have confirmed that their experiments demonstrated that the theories were wrong. Specifically, the team at Federal University of ABC in Brazil showed that thermodynamic processes were irreversible even in quantum systems, though the scientists were not able to discern why exactly that is. Our experiment shows the irreversible nature of quantum dynamics, but does not pinpoint experimentally what causes it at the microscopic level, what determines the onset of the arrow of time. One of the team, Mauro Paternostro, said, addressing it would clarify the ultimate reason for its emergence. But how do you test something like this? It's not easy. The team essentially had to create their own isolated quantum system to test whether reversing laws of physics could happen. The team used carbon-13 atoms submerged in liquid chlorophyll. Then they reversed the atom's nuclear spins using an oscillating magnetic field. They then repeated the process again to reverse the spins back. If the procedure were reversible, the spins would have returned to their starting points, but they didn't. But the fact that they did not says a lot. Rather than reverting back to their old state, the isolated quantum system quickly began to fall into disorder. Scientists said this was because the alternating magnetic pulses affected the atom so quickly that sometimes their spin could not keep up. After the experiment, the team were able to confirm that entropy in the isolated quantum system was in fact increasing. Therefore, time and the second law of thermodynamics affects everything, even the quantum world. Construction of the world's most powerful radio telescope to begin. Observatories are our best method of studying the universe above our heads. And as technology only improves, we are needing to upgrade our available observatories to match the pace. So when, in 2021, officials announced the construction of what will be the world's most powerful radio telescope, people were excited. It took decades of planning and organizing, but the plan for a 2 billion euro square kilometre array was commenced in both Australia and South Africa. The project is the result of the SCAR Observatory, a group of countries who are financing the monumental construction. This moment has been 30 years in the making, said Philip Diamond, Director General of SCAR. Humankind is taking another giant leap by committing to build what will be the largest science facility of its kind on the planet. But SCAR is not a single telescope, it's actually two. SCAR Low and SCAR Mid will be placed in Australia and South Africa respectively. Their names come from the range of frequencies that each telescope will cover. Amazingly, 
it has taken literal decades for SCAR to reach this point. Scientists and planners have dabbled with ideas of using other technology, but ten years ago, the decision to split the observatory into two telescope sites was made. And while those involved in the project have been waiting a long time, the result of everything that has happened in the last few years meant they had to wait even longer before construction could begin. Once SCAR is up and running, it will be the most powerful radio telescope to ever be built. The two telescopes will allow researchers to study the cosmos through radio wave data traveling from deep space. It is believed that the data gleaned from the SCAR project will give us data covering almost the entire history of the universe, said Diamond. More than 100 research labs, companies, and universities were involved in the design of the telescope site. The project included the design of networks, software, infrastructure, and antennas to keep SCAR running smoothly. As a final step, SCAR became an official trans-government body, with members across the world. Apart from South Africa and Australia, the founding members of SCAR are China, Italy, the Netherlands, Portugal, and the UK. The SCAR project has an intergovernmental status like another giant research structure. CERN, which houses the world's largest particle accelerator. SCAR made an agreement with CERN towards collaboration and sharing of information. With such monumental projects working in tandem, who knows what we might discover. Scientists find liquid water inside a meteorite For hundreds of years, scientists have yearned to find more examples of liquid water beyond Earth. Extraterrestrial liquid water might point to environments hospitable for our own species, or perhaps species totally unknown to us. In our own solar system, there are a number of examples where water exists. From Saturn's moon Enceladus, as well as the planet's own icy rings, to both liquid and frozen water on Mars, there seems to be a lot of water out in space. Yet, a recent study has shown that liquid water exists on meteors, something that scientists were not sure could happen. The meteor in question hit Earth on the 22nd of April in 2012 and was collected in fragments just two days later. And after years of examination, a 2021 report has shown that inside the meteor, named Sutter's Mill, exists liquid water within minerals. This type of meteorite is known as carbonaceous chondrites, but until now, Scientists have not discovered any form of preserved water within their structures. Upon examination, researchers were able to find small collections of liquid water that were full of carbon dioxide. It is believed that the meteor has existed since the early period of our solar system, which gives us an excellent view of what matter was like early in its history. Using microscopes, the team were able to find absolutely tiny minerals housing even smaller pools of liquid mixed with CO2. There is a possibility that meteors such as this helped to bring water to Earth in the first place. Speaking of the findings, study author Akira Sushiyama said that the discovery of water in this space rock gives the direct evidence of dynamic evolution of the solar system. Formed over four and a half billion years ago, it was only in 2012 that the ancient rock hit Earth in the Sutter's Mill Gold Rush site near Sacramento, California. This could contribute evidence to the theory that Earth gained water thanks to celestial bodies falling to Earth, with water trapped inside them. The theory would posit that these carbonaceous chondrites that may have crashed to Earth and been a source of our planet's water. While the amount of liquid water found in the present study is very small, Sushiyama said, the study gives the evidence for the presence of such liquid water. In other words, they added, if the water in those minerals contributed to Earth's water, then it can be considered the parent of Earth's water, and the meteorites hosting these minerals therefore the grandparent material of Earth's water. But what do you make of these curious discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.